Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to present you all you need to know about the evaporative emission control system on this Mercedes C200 W203 generation. So I will show you how it works, the components of it, and more importantly, how to test it up. First, let's see where the components of these systems are located. For that, you'll have to lift the car from at least the rear right wheel. Remove the wheel. Now you get access to the wheel splash shield. And as you can see, you've got three 10 millimeter nuts. One more over here. So basically you have to remove all the plastic clips you find around this wheel arch. So in my situation, I've got here one more plastic clip. So try to catch, twist and pull in the same time. Once you remove the wheel fender, right below the fuel tank cap, under here you will find the evap canister. On top is a mechanic shut-off valve, it's not electronic, on some cars you will find an electronic shut-off valve. From the canister on the bottom you will find two hoses. The first one is the evap purge hose, this one goes into the engine bay, and I will show you in a minute what's in the engine bay. And the second one is connected to the fuel tank itself. If you go under the hood, you'll find the EVAP canister purge solenoid next to the ABS system. And if you open the fuel pump assembly, you'll find the fuel tank pressure sensor on the same unit as the fuel level sensor. I'm gonna do a separate video about how to remove the fuel pump. All right, so now let's see how this system works on this car. You've got the fuel tank with gasoline which over time it evaporates and it builds pressure inside the tank. When the pressure sensor detects a specific level of vapors, we'll send a signal to the computer to turn on the canister purge solenoid. The computer will wait for the right moment to open the purge solenoid, like when you accelerate hard or when you cruise at normal speed. And it does that because it's kind of easier for the computer to measure how much of these vapors will enter into the intake. Therefore, when the computer opens the purge solenoid, the car must be in closed loop, which means the computer should use the data from the oxygen sensors as feedback. In these conditions, the computer will know when and how much to decrease the fuel injection while sucking gas vapors from the evap canister. So when this solenoid opens, it will allow vacuum from the intake manifold to suck some of the gasoline vapors which are collected in the canister. So as you might already notice, in order for all this procedure to happen, the canister, the shut-off valve and all the hoses should be in good working condition, which means it should not allow outside air to go in and should be sealed completely. Now with that being said, let's see a couple of tests you can do in order to determine where is the leak and what is the cause of it. Now in order to test the system easy, you will need a 12 volt battery and a hand vacuum pump with a bunch of hoses and adapters. If you can purchase this, it can be quite helpful when diagnosing multiple vacuum systems in the car. So I'm gonna start by removing the canister purge solenoid. You will have to press on this metal clamp and pull out the electric connector. Now keep in mind that this electric connector will not have 12 volts when you turn on the car because this is turned on randomly or in certain conditions. So here we are, the solenoid will just come out just pull out these vacuum hoses. All right, so I'm gonna start with a purge solenoid and I'm going to do a simple test. I will apply 12 volts and you should hear a click. Now, once you hear that click, it doesn't mean that the solenoid works. So I will do a vacuum test on the solenoid. I just put my adapter over here, connect my vacuum pump and here we go. I already found the problem. You can see the vacuum is not holded by the solenoid. This is a 100% confirmation that I need a new solenoid because the solenoid should hold vacuum much more than this. Now let's say your solenoid can, can hold the pressure much more than mine does. You can go ahead and apply 12 volts again and you should not be able to apply vacuum. So again, here you'll find two hoses. This one, it comes from the canister so I connected my hand vacuum pump on the line and I'm gonna go by the canister and obstruct this hose 
the one which goes into the engine bay and now it should be vacuum between this point and this point so let's see if i apply vacuum as you can see it holds the vacuum this is a good sign it means the hose from this point to that one is sealed all right once i'm done with this hose i will disconnect the second hose which goes in the fuel tank i will do the vacuum test on this now remember there is a lot more air a lot more volume but still there should be a decent vacuum increase and as you can see unfortunately i don't have any increase in vacuum there is a sound from the fuel tank and you could hear that noise the vacuum is not completely sealed between the fuel tank and this hose i will connect back the hoses on the canister all right so i'm done with the tests i could do on the canister and these two hoses so i'm gonna install back the splash shield i'm gonna connect back the solenoid and one more thing about the intake hose you should not have vacuum when the engine is stopped because this is connected to the throttle which is a little bit open and basically is not a sealed system on this hose that's the point and i'm gonna do an interesting experiment here i'm going to connect my scan tool on this obd2 port this negative number over here it indicates that there is more fuel into the air fuel mixture so as you could see i've got a vacuum leak on the solenoid which allows the fuel vapors to go to be sucked by the intake which creates this rich condition a few months before this number was higher was around minus nine minus nine percent which is kind of in the limit of uh, how much you want to read here all right so as you can see now the car enter in closed loop it uses oxygen sensors as a feedback in order to adjust the fuel i already know that this solenoid is broken if you have a closer look you see those lines on the top that's a sign of a rich condition because there is actually more fuel going into the intake than it should because this is not sealed a good example is going to be when i will apply 12 volts to the solenoid and it will basically completely open the circulation of gas vapors from the canister and it will be sucked into the intake manifold once i've done that you will see how the oxygen sensor will read a big rich condition here you also heard a change in idle noise and here we go you can see that that's a rich condition over there and you see the short-term fuel trim is trying to compensate for that now probably the canister is already empty so once i release the 12 volts you will see the oxygen sensor reading rich again because it's gonna be less air that extra air is no longer available from this evap system and fuel is injected still on the rate for the previous situation when there was extra air i hope you get the idea here right so i'm going to connect back the solenoid and let the computer do the job here you can see the trouble code which have been generated after i've been playing with the purge control valve you can actually see it says clearly circuit open so that's a quite precise trouble code generated by the computer all right guys that was it thanks for watching if you are new to this channel and you want to see more car repair videos hit that subscribe button it also helps me a lot to put more effort and work into these videos so until next time drive safe and i will see you soon